Shadow comes to us from the director of the masterpieces House of Flying Daggers and Hero, the latter of which I did get to see back in the day in theaters, which was a mesmerizing experience. And so naturally, when I found out this film was going to be showing at an art house theater in Akron, I was like, I have to go. I have got to go see this movie. And this film tells the story of a man known as a shadow or a decoy for someone more powerful than him. And he's forced to secretly train to beat a challenger with the result of this fight, hopefully allowing him to help reclaim the land. I actually had no idea this film was coming to Akron. I sometimes check Fandango and I just look at what movies are going to be on and I see this movie's coming and I'm like, what is this? Oh shit. I love all of this guy's movies. I have to go see this movie and I had no plans to see it today. I had no plans to review this movie. But I went to the theater and I saw it and I was just fucking blown away by this movie. This is easily the best movie I've seen in a theater so far in 2019. It's one of the most gorgeous looking films I've seen in years. And it's also extremely powerful. There's a central romance in the film as per usual with films like this, epic martial arts films of ancient times. There's usually some sort of forbidden love along with these amazing sequences where people are flipping and turning and flying in the air. And they handle it really well because it, it never feels cheesy. It never gets to that point where I was like, okay, this is very soap opera-like. It's handled with extreme skill, acted with precision, and I found myself actually caring about the romance. Even though I came to the movie expecting badass action sequences, which I got, I found myself wrapped up in that romance. But the film is also a very secretive movie because we have all of these characters that are in the middle of some kind of deception. Everyone has an agenda. Their leader is terrible at his job. He's not quite as bad as, say, Joffrey from Game of Thrones, but he obviously does not give a shit about his land, and he's spineless. He never wants people to actually go to battle. He just wants to compromise over and over again. And so we have people behind the scenes who are attempting to reclaim their land without the king noticing so they can get shit done. And it's riveting. This is actually a, a far more complex film than I expected going in. And you have to really pay attention because most of the lead characters in this film are all silent types. Sure, they have dialogue, but they tend to let most of their emotions play out silently just on their face. And you have to read them very carefully so you understand what their motivation is throughout scenes. And this became really fascinating to watch. I loved that there was so much silence in this movie where characters were, were thinking things but just not expressing that. And this allows the actors to really play around. And you don't get that too much, especially in American films. You usually have to find that in foreign cinema, where they trust you to extreme extents to really understand what they're going for. The film is also presented in an amazing color scheme, which uses mostly black and white, where characters retain skin tone, blood is very obviously red on the screen, and it's incredible to see when it splashes out of the soldiers in various battles. And from what I understand, this was done to sort of tribute Chinese ink wash paintings. And this film looks like a painting. Every single shot is masterful. But naturally, I think most people will be excited to see the battle sequences that play out throughout Shadow, and they do not disappoint. As per usual with all of his martial arts films, the action sequences are jaw-dropping. They are breathtaking, and there's a lot more of them than I expected. In particular, one sequence in which soldiers have encased themselves in razor-bladed umbrellas, and they are sliding down a rain-swept road. And these razor-bladed umbrellas are, are like reflecting arrows that are being shot at them. And there was no music during this sequence. It was just sound effects and these painted images just exploding in front of me. I felt like I was watching a movie that I just don't get the privilege to see in a theater that often. It really made me extremely happy. Like I was like, thank you, this is like a filmmaker who really understands just about every fucking thing. Because the romance is on point. The drama and, and the interplay, there's even some comedy interwoven. The cinematography and the action, it's all pitch perfect. Let's talk about the music though, because the music is almost a character of its own in this movie. There's many scenes in which people play this instrument called a lute. And there's one particular sequence with this instrument where two people are playing it and it's interspliced with sequences of carnage and blood and gore and it was just fucking amazing. This movie really gave me everything I wanted, and I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. I have only one small issue with the movie, and I would say it's the first 30 minutes. The pacing is not on point as much as the rest of the film. You're sort of getting into it and understanding where people stand, and that can be a little hard. As I said, characters don't always 
express what their goals are. And sometimes you have to read behind the lines, which is really fun. But for the opening of your movie, I was sort of like, what is this movie about? Exactly. And it was just sort of this period of confusion for like maybe 20 to 30 minutes. It was all amazing to look at, but I was sort of waiting for the movie to start. I have a feeling, though, that on repeat viewings, this will not be an issue now that I've seen the whole movie. And those first 30 minutes kind of trust you. They're like, okay, you understand, right? You kind of get this. One of the issues is that it's similar to some of his other films. It opens with text explaining the world to you. And you have to kind of read this block of text. And then you just have to retain all of that information to understand for a while. And that's that's a little too much. I, I, I never like when a filmmaker is like, here's our world in a big block of text. I hope you... <laughs> remember everything you just read over the next few minutes. That's the only issue I have with this movie. It's gorgeous. It's a near masterpiece. One of the best martial arts films I've ever seen. I'm going to give Shadow an A. I highly suggest seeing this movie in theaters. If it comes to one near you, please do, because it will not be the same at home. I guarantee it. See this movie on a gigantic screen with booming surround sound. It's worth it. Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.